Hi, Leilani. What are you looking for? Uh, actually, Bob, I'm looking to see if the crepe myrtle aphids have come in yet. This is Leilani Davis, our Integrated Pest Management Project Coordinator here at the center. Uh, Lani, I know a lot of people are familiar with crepe myrtle as a landscape plant and its beautiful flowers that we'll expect to uh, appear here pretty shortly, but uh, what are you using the crepe myrtle plant for in our Integrated Pest Management Program? Well, actually, Bob, uh, the crepe myrtle gets an aphid, um, and aphids, there are a lot of different kind of aphids, but the one that comes to the crepe myrtle is the crepe myrtle aphid and only goes to the crepe myrtles and actually none of the other crops that we have around it. Uh, so uh, with the fact that it does actually hold those um, bugs, those pests, we can call it a banker plant. So the idea is that when these aphids are here, um, the beneficials such as the lady beetle, the parasitic wasp that actually feed on aphids and aphids of all sorts will come to this plant and feed. And as their populations expand, they will then in turn go out to the other crops searching for more food. Wow. So we have an opportunity here to sort of bank or increase the population really of the good guys, the banker plant. In the, in the term that we would use there is, is really meaning that the, the beneficials like lady beetles and parasitic wasps are gonna build up on the crepe myrtle aphid here. And then when they build up to high populations and move out to our adjacent cash crop area, then when they get out there, the lady beetles will feed on any kind of aphids. So if we have melon aphids in our, in our melon crops, for instance, then the insects that we build up here on our banker plant can go out and do good work in the, in the field. That's very interesting. And of course, crepe myrtles are pretty easy to grow here in Florida, don't require a lot of uh, maintenance. And so it, it seems like that would be a, a really good fit. So um, that's our banker plant. Are there other kinds of strategies that you're incorporating in here? Well, actually, Bob, another plant with a purpose, as you have called them before, is our uh, laurel flower, uh, which is actually a shrubby, uh, false button uh, weed plant, uh, technically a uh, spermacosi, uh, but those of us who do IPM like to call it the lara flower, uh, and that is because uh, the lara wasp is very, very attracted to it. Uh, in fact, it, um, having that around, it seems as though uh, we've, we knew that, that in the region there were those wasps, that, that it was recognized that were here, but very rarely seen. Uh, in the last year, uh, the wasp, uh, we've actually planted about 200 of these plants uh, in our dry corners, in along the hedge line, uh, and we're seeing a lot of the lara wasp. Uh, and this is uh, an exciting thing because lara wasp is a predator to the mole cricket, ah. uh, which is a real difficult um, pest to manage. Uh, it actually lays an egg on the mole cricket, and as the larvae develops, uh, it eats the mole cricket. The mole cricket, wow. Well, I know over the years, the mole crickets in this area have been quite plentiful. So having a wasp like the Lara wasp uh, out here to, to, to uh, feed on the mole crickets would be a, a really good thing. I think it was recently introduced by some professors at the University of Florida, specifically targeting the mole cricket as the main food source. So we've got mole crickets in the area. We have now know that we are building the population of the Lara wasp on this farm because we're providing it good nourishment. The nectar that's provided by the shrubby false buttonweed plant, uh, the Lara wasp love it. So there's a, there's a direct association with that Lara flower and the Lara wasp. So uh, it was really fascinating to me to know on this farm that it was rare that we ever saw a sighting of the Lara wasp. And after you've planted these 200 plants within the last year, it was really incredible to come to this particular site in the fall of last year and rarely come out here and not find a Lara wasp. Yes, so right. in a very short period of time, it has built up to, uh, to incredibly high populations here in this field. Adjacent to this field, we're probably also helping the Lara wasp because they are going to be a ground dwelling uh, insect. And so the less we disturb the ground, the better off we're going to be. So utilizing conservation tillage practices where we're not plowing and turning over the ground allows the Lara wasp sites to be undisturbed and not kill them by tillage. So the field behind us 
the, uh, the, the crops that are being grown there were utilizing conservation tillage methods. And as we, as we now know, at least 70% of our nat native pollinators uh, are going to also be ground dwellers. So That's the Lara wasp, we want to protect it, and we want to protect our other uh, ground dwelling native pollinators as well. Those are two really exciting um, things that we found here in the sh very short period of time that are helping us with the overall whole farm approach to integrated pest management here at the center. Lonnie, thank you. Thank you, Bob.